Yeah, that's just what I reckon. <sighs> do I have to do my makeup again? Welcome to the RX Review Post Games Wrap Up Show brought to you by Climb On Skincare Products. I'm John Michael and I'm joined yet again by my partner in crime, Michael McCoy. And we're still at the front of the Home Depot Centre on what was a spectacular first day of events in the CrossFit Games. There's been surprises, there's been resurgence of 2012 or 2011 Games winners, and of course there's been, uh, there's been changes in the leaderboard. Michael, what was your biggest surprise of the day? Look, I'd say putting aside the actual leaderboard for a moment, the biggest surprise of the day when we showed up here with the actual crowd. I was here in 2010 and uh, I could just tell you, you know, the feeling, the atmosphere here today, you know, it was much more electric. It was just, it was just packed to the brim. We heard it was sold out months ago and, um, you know, sometimes when you hear these events are sold out, you really don't believe it. But when I got here, you know, believe it, I did. I mean, everywhere you walk, you walk down the vendor's alley, previously, like I said, in 2010, almost like a ghost land down there today. Full, you couldn't walk bumper to bumper, shoulder to shoulder. There's people everywhere. So, you know, I, I even saw the Goodyear blimp. <laughs> well, look, I definitely thought the actual crowds were going to be as busy as it was, so it wasn't a surprise for me. What was a surprise for me was Dave Castro's announcements this morning that the Broad Jump is coming back. Now, the Broad Jump was actually initially announced as a, as a third event at Camp Pendleton on Wednesday. However, they scrapped it and uh, didn't tell anyone, but this morning they brought it back. So we, just like many other media organisations, arrived in the morning to find out that it had already been completed, um, which just adds even more stress to the competitors, I suppose, and what's being a four-day event now. I mean, is it too much for these competitors? Look, yeah, that was a little bit surprising. I mean, like I said, we showed up today thinking that the broad jump had been eliminated um, and all of a sudden the media room was kind of saying, oh, it's already taken place. <laughs> I spoke to Katie Hogan and uh, she was reporting for the women's event. She didn't even know. Um, so, you know, I think, yeah, that's the, that's the thing with, with CrossFit. You never know what's going to happen. I guess it stayed true again today. Well, let's go straight to the results and starting with the men's leaderboard where 2011 champ Rich Froning Jr. is yet again on top. Now, he's been Mr. Consistent all throughout this weekend. Hasn't won an event. In fact, I think his highest position or placing has been a fourth. But it just shows you, Michael, that consistency really does get you those wins in the end. Yeah, he did that uh, last year. Uh, he was just consistent all th throughout the uh, weekend. And that's how you really succeed in CrossFit. That's what you have to do. You have to come out here. You don't always have to be the number one uh, performer on the day, but you just have to stay consistent throughout the weekend. And that's what he seems to be doing he's really primed I also spoke to him you know back um, back during the athletes warm-up area mm -hmm. and uh, he seemed very relaxed very friendly very talking to the media some of the other athletes a little bit shy of the media didn't want to discuss things however Froning very open willing to discuss anything and that really shows in his body language and I think that shows in his performance so um, it's very interesting yeah, he's always a cool cat on the competition floor and another cool cat on the competition floor is Casper the friendly ghost himself Kyle Casper Bauer now this guy is a bit of a smoky <laughs> <laughs> yes, keep singing, mate. And look, he's actually in second position overall, only behind Rich Froning. Now, he's a 30-year-old veteran, competed in the Games back in 2009. I suppose he's come here again after a two-year hiatus, and people thought, I mean, is this guy really going to make the top three? Is he a real competitor? Mm. I mean, I personally didn't think so. I thought he was kind of making up the numbers. But now looking at his performances over the last two days, He's a genuine threat, Mike. He's a genuine contender. I'd agree with that. You know, we call him Casper the Ghost because um, I really hadn't paid any attention to him, you know. <laughs> Maybe it was my, um, you know, lack of knowledge and, you know, all those competitors you just don't know. And I just hadn't paid much attention to him. But he's, you know, proved me wrong and he's, um, you know, stood up to the test of the day. Uh, one guy that I had penciled in as the winner, believe it or not, this weekend was actually the Australian Chad Mackay. Now, he was the overnight leader, has been displayed or dismantled at the top position. However, he's still in the top three, Mikey. And, uh... Still looking good. Yeah, Mackay, I me mean, a personal favourite of mine, very friendly man, easy to talk to. Again, spoke to him backstage um, after the first event. Yeah, he wasn't too happy with it, but I would say, you know, very impressive performance. He's won two events. You know, he won the GHD Paul mm -hmm. Toss and he won the Camp Pendleton. I mean, this really could be his year, John. Oh, well, let's talk about some of the well, less impressive performances of the day or less impre impressive performances thus far. We've got Jason Kalipa, who's in 19th position. Now, he's a 2008 winner. And Ben Smith, last year's podium finisher, is all the way down in 18th position. Uh, did you expect this? Uh, is, there, is there hope for them still? Is it too late? With Kalipa, you never know what you're going to get. I mean, some days he comes, he performs, he throws down. He looks like the number one contender in the world. Other days, he doesn't seem to pull through. I mean, there's still plenty of points on offer left for the weekend. Can he pull it through? I hope he can. He is a fan favourite, but um, it's going to be a tough cast. Now, in regards to Ben Smith, I picked him to be a podium finisher. A little bit disappointed with him. I said, you know, you have to be really sitting in the top 15. Anything could happen, but um, have to be in the top 15 before you could really, you know, make a push for that mm -hmm. final uh, podium position. And he looks like he's sitting outside. All right, well, after day two of the CrossFit Games, the 2012 CrossFit Games, 
Who are your predictions for the top three now, Michael? Oh, top three, it's going to be difficult. Look, ah, I, earlier today, I thought I knew what I was talking about. To, you know, <laughs> this evening, a few hours of sun, you know, not enough alcohol. <laughs> Bit of uh, rain as well. I, I'm look. I'm just going to say that Froning is going to take number one. If he could take two and three, he would. But uh, look, hopefully, I'm going to you know, maybe be an Australian fan favourite. I'm going to say Mackay would probably take third, but yeah, uh, uh, he'll take third. Who's going to take second? I don't know. Yeah, well, my heart's saying Chad Mackay, but my brain is saying Rich Froning. So let's see what'll yeah. pan out the next two days. Moving across to the females division now, Julie Fouché um, has really impressed me today. Um, the first couple of events, she was on fire she was looking the goods unfortunately in the final event of the day she actually didn't finish within the 10 minute cutoff and unfortunately has lost eradicated a 60 point lead and turned it into a, just a one point lead now i suppose can she hold on is it a case of when she'll be overtaken what's the story with her right now yeah difficult one i said you know going into today that yeah camp pendleton was her event so she was primed in that position i expected that for her i did expect her to drop down to the leaderboard today and she's done that so uh it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I don't think she can take it out yet. It's going to be interesting. Thorosot is there. I'm interested to see what Clever can do. So, uh, look, maybe she can have it, but I just don't think she'll take number one yet. Uh, let's talk about some of those former champions who are just not getting away by any chance. They're still there in the top ten positions. Starting with Annie Thorostotter, last year's champion in fifth position. I mean, you spoke to her today. How's she feeling? What's she up to? Look, very relaxed, very easy to talk to. As mm -hmm. I said, some people a little bit apprehensive. She's very well coached. Um, you know, I spoke to some of the coaches that I mentioned. They just, you know, they, they, they're very happy with the position. So, I think, you know, one or two for her. Um, even more so, earlier this morning, I had her, in, had her in second place, you know, like saying that she could take it out. It's quite possible, you know, she's going to win it, so... And Kristen Clever, the girl from Valley CrossFit, how's she doing? What do you think about her? I think she's currently sitting in fifth position. A um, bit higher. Uh, six, bit higher. six or seventh. Again, another reason why I just don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, look, it, it's still early stages yet. Yeah, I still think one, two, three is going to be is going to be a mix of Thoris daughter, Clever, and uh, uh, Fouché. So, but you know, what order that is? Order is I, I don't know. Yeah, well, I agree with you on that one. I think that um, Kristen Clever and Annie Thorister are still the two to beat. But there is a smoky in the mix, and that is Talana Fortunato. Now, just like Cole Casper Bau, she, she dominated the regionals this year. This is her first game. Now, she's a bit older as well. Um, I think she's 30-year-old, just like Cole. Um, sitting in second position, only one point behind uh, the leader, Julie Fouché. Look, anything's possible in the CrossFit Games. She's really, uh, I suppose, surprised many people at this stage, and she hasn't drop down the leaderboard at this stage. I think she's every chance to cause an upset this weekend. So time will tell, but I'm tipping her to possibly cause the upset of maybe the year uh, and beat Doris Dotter and Clever. Cool. You like those outside shots, don't you? I do, Michael. And let's quickly talk about uh, the team's event. We spoke about it earlier this morning. We said the team's event probably is the hardest one to tip who's going to win. I believe you said that Cross Melbourne's CrossFit Schwartz is going to make the, will be the first team to make a podium finish for Australia. They're sitting in 21 or 21st position, Michael. So your prediction was wrong yet again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to make those predictions, you know, just get out there, just throw it out there, guess whatever you know, happens. Look, maybe it was my Australian pride coming through. I thought they'd be, you know, sitting in stronger position. Still a lot of points up for grabs, but um, still early days and hopefully they can pull through. And talking about the leader of the team's division, that's Hacks Pack Ute, Mikey. What can you tell us about them? I can tell you, if you say that three times when you're drunk, you're going to start stuttering. All right, well, that about wraps up our post-game wrap-up show. Don't forget, we'll be take back tomorrow morning for... <laughs> take out yourself as well. We'll be back tomorrow morning for a preview again of day three at the Home Depot Centre. Once again, follow our Facebook and Twitter for all the updates. We'll be doing live vlogging tomorrow and have even more interviews with some of the top athletes of the CrossFit Games. And once again, thanks to our mates at Climb On for making this possible. Remember, if you can't put it on your skin, don't eat it, guys. You know, you get like five cents for like a can. Yeah, well, then you better here. start running, mate. Come on. <laughs>